Hello. Welcome to our training video on submitting wire transfers in business online banking. My name is Ashley Thole and I am a Deposit Implementation Specialist with Heritage Bank. Currently on your screen you can see the email address and phone number for our technical and deposit services support. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or concerns at any time. Here's our agenda for today. We will first cover some basic online banking wire information. Then we will go through some demos in online banking. We will look at how to initiate and approve wires. Then we'll spend some time talking about templates, how to create them, edit, and delete them. Lastly, besides this training video, we will cover some additional resources available to you. Here's some general wire information. Each user of business online banking that will be submitting or approving a wire transfer request needs to have a unique username and token to log in. These are assigned and provided by the bank. Each user will have their own daily wire transfer limit. All wires, domestic or international, must be sent in U.S. funds in online banking. If you have an international wire that needs to be sent in foreign currency, please contact our deposit services team at the email or phone number provided. These will not be able to be sent through online banking. The account funding the wire must have fully collected funds in order to complete the wire transfer. Frequently sent wires can be set up in online banking as a template for easy submission. Creation of new templates in online banking must be approved by the bank before the template can be used. Please contact us to review any new templates. There are two types of entry and approval processes for wire transfers in online banking. One is the business entry with business approval. So what that means is that two people from your business do both the entry and the approval steps. One person logs into online banking and enters the wire information. Other user logs in and approves the wire. For security purposes and to reduce risk or, or fraud, the entry and approval must be completed by two different individuals on two different computers. This is an industry standard or best practice method for wire transfers in online banking. The other option is business entry with bank approval. What that means is one person from your business logs in and enters the wire information then someone in our Deposit Services Department will review the wire before it is sent. For security purposes, business approvals can be accomplished through our mobile banking app, but business entry cannot. The app is handy for when the approving person is out of the office. With the app, the user will use their same username and will be required to use their token, just like logging in from a computer. Be sure if you choose this option that you have your token with you. For domestic wires submitted in online banking, they must be approved by 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. For international wires submitted in U.S. funds in online banking, these must be approved by 3.15 Central Time. The benefit of wire transfer services is that it is a same-day transfer service. Therefore, wires cannot be entered one business day for transfer on the next business day or a future date. Instead, wires must be entered and approved on the business day they are to be transferred out of your business account and received by the recipient. Let's take a look at entry and approval processes a bit more. Here's a chart that outlines the business entry with business approval. Entry is done by an online banking user for your business. Approval is done by another online banking user for your business on a different computer. As previously stated, for security purposes, business entry with business approval is a best practice and industry standard for this type of banking service. With that being said, entry and approval must be done on two different computers to further protect your business and the transfer. The approval process is highly important because once a wire is sent, it is very difficult for the bank to get your money back if it is sent incorrectly. Also, if the recipient's information is entered incorrectly, the beneficiary bank may delay giving the funds to the recipient. If you are entering or approving wires, be sure to always double check your data entry. In this process, there is no callback verification unless there is an issue or discrepancy within the wire. Please note, if someone at the business is not available to approve the wire, 
entry should not be done in online banking, but rather sent to business online at heritagebankna.com to be entered. In this case, a callback verification will be required. In the case of a business entry with bank approval, there are two scenarios that could occur. They are based on whether the wire was entered using a pre-built template in online banking or not. Wires done through a pre-built template will be entered in online banking by a user for your business. They will be approved by Heritage Bank and will not have a callback verification unless there are discrepancies within the wire that cause us to need more information or clarification. Wires not done through a pre-built template will be entered in online banking by a user for your business. They will be approved by Heritage Bank and will require a callback verification. Someone from Heritage Bank will call the business and will need to speak with someone who is authorized to approve wires on the business's behalf. They will confirm all data entered is correct before sending out the wire. If a callback is unsuccessful for any reason, the wire transfer will be rejected. Now let's move to online banking and go through some online demonstrations. Go to our website, www.heritagebankna.com. From the login portion, enter in your access ID or username, and be sure to click on the radio button, Business and then click Submit. Using your token, enter in your token number along with the PIN number you have selected. Once logged in from the home screen, hover on the Management Tools tab. Go down to Transfer List, and from there you'll see all of your transfer templates. You may see a domestic transfer or a foreign transfer or a wire transfer, and then if you have any pre-built templates, those transfer template descriptions would be listed here as well. For our first example, we're going to use the wire transfer template, which is a generic template. Once in the transfer screen, you'll notice that the routing number for Heritage Bank automatically floods in. The issue transfer section is the information that you will be required to fill out. The recipient of the wire will have to provide you their incoming wire transfer instructions. To send a wire using this template, simply complete all the blank fields. If the ultimate beneficiary bank uses a correspondent bank, the correspondent bank's information will go in the receiving institution fields, and the ultimate beneficiary bank information will go in the beneficiary information section. Fill in the ultimate beneficiary bank account number in the beneficiary account number field. The name of the ultimate recipient will go in the beneficiary account name, address, city, state, zip fields. The account number for the ultimate recipient can go in the beneficiary instruction field. If the bank does not use a correspondent bank, the receiving bank and the beneficiary bank are the same, and you will enter in that bank's information in both sections. Okay, in our example, the transfer date, remember, is today's date, because as previously stated, entry and approval must be done on the same business day the transfer is to be effective. Enter in your dollar amount, select the account you wish to have the wire come from, enter in the receiving and beneficiary institution information, and in my example, my receiving institution does not use a correspondent bank. Therefore, the information in both sections is the same for the receiving bank as well as the beneficiary bank. The beneficiary account number is XYZ Company's account number in this situation. I enter in XYZ Company's name, address, city, state, and zip, and then in the beneficiary instruction information, if I have an invoice number, I can put that in. If I need to be paying on a loan with this company, then I'm going to say further credit to loan 1234, or maybe it's invoice 1234 or combine, or whatever the case might be, whatever further instruction you wish to have there will go in that section. Once all your data is entered, click the Submit button. The wire will be verified. Then, in the case where your business is doing business entry with business approval, you'll see on your confirmation screen that there's a warning banner saying transfer is pending supervisor approval. At this point, the entry is complete 
And now the approver must log in from their own computer or a separate computer with their own username and token number, and they'll approve this wire. If your business was not doing business entry with business approval and the bank was approving, you would not have this warning at the top. It would simply just be your transfer confirmation screen. Let's go ahead and log off as this user, log in on another computer, and show you the approval process. So as the other user from the home page, I will log in. Once I'm logged into online banking, I have a banner at the top that says I have one transfer awaiting review. Also, further down on that home page, I have a funds transfer section where I can see that the wire here is sitting waiting for approval. As the approver, it's important that I click on the hyperlink here, open up the transfer, and verify that all of the entered information is correct for my recipient. Remember, if any of this information is entered incorrect and we send it, it could be difficult for Heritage Bank to get the wire back or for the beneficiary bank to further credit the recipient. So we want to make sure at this point that all data is correct. After I've reviewed this section and it all seems okay, I'm going to click Done. And from this home page, I simply click on the box and click Approve. Now say some data in the wire transfer was incorrect. Maybe I had a transposed number in the account number. I'm going to hit disapprove on this and contact the person who did the entry and inform them that the entry was incorrect. The entry person will then have to re-enter all data and start from scratch. This wire will disappear. So again, make sure that your entry is correct the first time. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and approve this wire and let it go. Once the wire is successfully approved, you'll get a green checkbox that says that it was approved. Go ahead and click OK. From here, you're done. You can log out or you can continue working in online banking as needed. Now, let's take a look at some wire templates. From your management tools, go to Transfer List, and here you can see I have a test template. This is a pre-built template for my test example business. If it was a payment on your system, it might say something to the effect of XYZ company invoices or XYZ vendor payment. It could be described as anything that would be identifiable to your business. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you can see when I look at this template, all of the information on the left-hand side is in relation to the recipient, the receiving bank, the beneficiary bank, our bank routing number, and then on the right-hand side, all that needs to be entered is your transfer amount. You select your account that it's coming from if it needs to change, and then any beneficiary instruction. This makes submission very easy. I'll go ahead and put in my dollar amount, and I'll put in my beneficiary instruction, and then all I need to do is click Submit. Again, in my example, I am set up as a business entry with business approval. So even on these templates, they need to be approved by somebody else in my business. So now it's waiting for approval, just like our first example was. I'm going to go ahead and click Log Out, and I'll log back in as a different user from a different computer to be able to approve this. So again, logged in as somebody else from a different computer, I can see that I have a waiting transfer review. I can click on the test template hyperlink to review the wire. Again, this was a pre-built template, so there might not be as many fields that need to be reviewed as there would be if I was using the generic general wire transfer template. Because I only entered dollar amount and beneficiary instructions, that might be the only sections that need to be reviewed. But it's a good idea to always review the entire transfer. Once I've reviewed it, click Done and then go ahead and approve your wire. Again, once the wire is approved, you'll get the green check mark saying it's been approved, and you're done. Now let's take a look at editing templates. From the Administration tab, go to Change Template, click Submit to get all your templates, click on the template you wish to change. From here, you'll get all of the pre-built information. Depending on what you need to change, go ahead and make those edits. So say I need to change the account number because that changed on the recipient's end. 
I would update that down here and click Submit. Once I have made my change to my template, I will get a confirmation screen. This lets you know that whatever change you just made has been confirmed. But remember, all template creations and edits should be sent to Heritage Bank to review before using the template. Now let's look at creating a template. From the Administration tab, under Funds Transfer, click Add Template. From the Funds Transfer type, select the type of transfer you wish to create. Remember, regardless if it's a domestic or a foreign wire, all wires must be sent as U.S. funds through online banking. Let's set up a domestic wire. You'll give the transfer a description. Make sure the description is easily identifiable in a list of templates. So this template is going to be set up to go to XYZ Company, LLC. Over on the right, under the Review Required, be sure to select Supervisor if your business is doing business entry with business approval. If nothing is selected here, it will fall into a business entry with bank approval and may require a callback. In the From section, select the account you wish to have assigned to this template. The routing number and your account number for that account will automatically flood in. On the right, we have automatic transfers. Here you can set up a frequency. For example, if I needed a transfer to go out monthly, I would select monthly here. I'm then able to select number of remaining transfers. So maybe it's a transfer that's only going to happen once a month for one year. I'm going to put in 12 for 12 recurring transfers. Now if it's a monthly transfer that I don't want to stop, I'm going to leave the remaining transfers blank. In our example today, we're going to select On Demand. In the default section, you are able to put in a default dollar amount or a default increment. So if you only want to pay them in $100 increments, or you can set up a minimum and maximum allowed. If you don't know, and this dollar amount will vary with this template, leave the default section blank. In the receiving information, this is going to be the receiving bank or in a correspondent bank situation, it will be the correspondent bank's information. In the beneficiary institution section, this is going to be the ultimate beneficiary bank. Then you'll enter in all of the beneficiary's information, their name, address, city, state, zip, and then any default message. This could be pre-filled with invoice number, and then every time you use the template, you just add in the invoice number or you can leave this blank. So here you can see all of my data for my receiving bank and beneficiary have been entered. In this case, I've used a beneficiary bank and a receiving bank that are the same because this bank doesn't use a correspondent bank to receive wires. I've entered in the beneficiary's account number and their name and address. Down in my default message, I put in invoice number, so then all I have to fill out every time I use the template is the actual invoice number. Once all of my data is entered, I will click Submit. I will get a confirmation screen indicating that my template has been successfully built. However, remember you must contact Heritage Bank to review the template before the template can be used in online banking. Now let's look at deleting a template. Under the Administration tab, click on Delete Template, search all your templates, locate the template that you wish to delete. I'm going to go ahead and delete the template we just created. I'm going to click on it and click Submit. Be advised, there is no Are You Sure You Wish to Delete. It will just simply delete. So be sure you're on the correct template before clicking on Submit to reduce any risk of deleting a template you don't intend on deleting. You'll get a confirmation screen that says that the template has been deleted. That's it. You're done. Now that we're done with our demos in online banking, let's talk about some resources that are available to you. Here are the resources that we have available for you. Our website is a great starting place. We have many resources and information regarding our business and personal products and services. We also have educational videos and tutorials on many different topics. If you are interested in the Business Mobile Banking app, please visit our website for more detail. Contact us with any questions you may have. 
If you have not already received the two handouts listed here and wish to have them sent to you, let us know. We'd be happy to send them. And as always, you can refer back to your copy of the Wire Transfer Master Agreement that was completed when the wire service was established for your business. This concludes our training for today. Thank you for joining me. I truly hope that you found this training valuable. I have listed our contact information on the screen for you again. Please contact us with any questions. Thanks again, and have a great day.